why we see things the way that we see things. And it's really all about perception. If we see things through the lens of what's happened to us, most of the time we're going to see things through a faulty lens. Because a lot of the times we get beat up by life and then we see everything through that wound or that hurt. But what the Father wants to do today, which is God, is He wants to reveal how much He loves us so we can see the right way. And what happens is, is if you see things through the price that was paid for you, you can see the right way. But if you see yourself as unworthy because you've been spoken down to or belittled or you have been left out or you haven't been the one that other people would think highly of, whether your family doesn't have money, whether you don't drive a car yet and you're 18 years old, whatever it may be, those things, they tend to get on our hearts and then they stain us and then we see life through that stain. But what happens is, is when our perception changes and we see how valuable we are, then we can begin to look at life a lot differently. So who in this room would say that they're valuable? Who looks at themselves in the mirror and likes what they see? So if you look in the mirror and you don't like what you see, most of the time, you're seen through what you've done that's brought about certain things in your life or what somebody's done to you that's brought about certain things in your life. But until you see what's been done for you and until you see what's been accomplished on the cross for you, you'll never know what love is. So what love looks like is it looks like arms wide open and a heart exposed and Jesus Christ dying on a cross and giving his life for you. So until you see how valuable you are based on the price that was paid for you, you can sell cheap to maybe a lie or an opinion or what somebody else thinks, but it's all about what he says about you. And what his barometer is for love is the cross. It's not about how things are going with your exams. It's not about if you're doing well in the sport that you play. It's about what he accomplished on the cross. So he's calling every one of your hearts into attention today to pledge your allegiance to Jesus, to what he's accomplished, so you no longer look at life through the things that you failed. Because fail is first attempt at learning. So when we come out of the womb, we're in a learning process, but we can't go by the things that we've learned or the things that have been done to us through the wisdom of the world. Because the wisdom of the world will lead us astray. But God's wisdom is that He would send His only begotten Son and reveal to you what love is. So I want to share this message with you and pass it off to Josh. That love has a face and it looks like a crown of thorns. It looks like bloodshot, swollen eyes. It looks like a blotchy beard that was pulled out. It looks like a face that's been beaten, unrecognizable, because there was whips and there was punching and there were things done to this one who is love. And that is the man, Christ Jesus. He paid a price to reveal to you your true identity. He was beaten unrecognizable so you could recognize who you really are. Until you see the price that he paid, you'll never wake up to how valuable and how beautiful you really are. So I want to show you today that the cross isn't just a reminder of your sin. It's the reminder of how valuable you are to him. It's not that you were such a sinner that he had to go to the cross and do this horrific thing. It was that you were somebody that was lost that he wanted to find. And he was willing to give up everything to find you. He was willing to leave all others to come and meet you. And come and show you that you're worth everything that he would pay a price for. So before I pass it to Josh, I just want one of you guys to tell me what does it mean to be chosen by God and to be known by God. Can anybody give me anything on that? What would it mean to be chosen by God and to be known by God? Is there anybody here that has anything on that? What would it mean for the God that created the heavens and the earth to choose you, to pick you out, who knows you by name, who knows every strand of hair on your head, to know you? What would that look like in your life if you knew He was always looking he was always there to protect. He was always there to provide. He is the one that's always in your corner. He's the one that's always always cares about you. What would that look like in your life? Is there anybody that would be bold enough to just share something about what that would look like in their life? Anybody? 
What would that look like? I think that would change. That would change everything. Um, the person's life, especially if they've gone through high school, they feel a little bit empty, a little bit lost. I think that would be a lot changing. Yeah. So to know that somebody knows you even better than you know yourself, and he was willing to give up everything to show you who you really are. That's real love. Because right now, to try to borrow $100 from one of your classmates may be like yanking out their teeth. But he shed all of his blood. He gave up all of his life to reveal to you how precious you really are. So I just want you all to know that you're important, that you're not forgotten, that you are special, and that you truly are worth everything that he paid a price for. So I'm going to pass it off to Josh. But just let that just sink in a little bit because there's so many things out there bidding for our attention, right? In the media, network, more, everything you can imagine is out there. But this is a message that's speaking to your heart, not just to your social network buddies. So let it affect you personally because what he did was very personal. He was willing to be exposed and beaten, unrecognizable, no clothes, no nothing, out in the open on top of a mountain and he's willing to display his love to you in that way, how much more right, will he freely give you what it is that's needed for you to accomplish the great things that he's put in your heart. So I'm going to pass it off to Josh now. How many of you guys have issues? I have issues. <laughs> Let me be real with you. This is real, alright? My life has been difficult recently. My mom has Lyme disease. My dad has it as well. My dad is currently getting treated for it. Like right now as we speak, he's in the hospital. Uh, he had a cyst on his liver that burst, so they have to take care of that. It's tearing me up inside as it tears him up literally inside. It's tearing me up fi figuratively inside. My wife has been a rock for me in many ways, but at the same time, recently we've gone through some very difficult things. Very difficult. And my life kind of sucked, honestly. <laughs> Just be blunt, it sucked to many degrees. But you know what I would do? I would put on a happy face. I would put on that mask. And it was just a masquerade every day for me. I'm happy. I'm, I'm good. I'm the FCA guy, right? I'm supposed to be happy all the time. Guess what? I wasn't. I was putting up a front. And God taught me something through that, that I need to be vulnerable, and I need to be open, and I need to share with you the truth. See, some of y'all are putting up masks even right now. you got some things in your life that are going on you don't want anybody else to know about. You're just a happy-go-lucky. I'm happy, I'm fine, I'm fine. But inside, you're dying. Inside, you're exploding. Inside, it hurts. See, God taught me that I need to be vulnerable, that I need to be open so that my wounds can be healing. So that my wounds can be healed, but also so that my wounds can be exposed and show that there can be healing. The Lord has a plan for each of us. And he wants you to know his healing touch even more than just, I don't know, even more than just Sunday church, even more than just Wednesday night or whatever it is. It's about community with God. Community with God. Today, I want to encourage you and I want to challenge you to step up and become part of that community. Today, all across the San Fernando Valley, I've been seeing change happen. I've been seeing crazy change. Even in the midst of my pain and in the midst of my hurt, God has used me, and I can't say I did anything. It's kind of frustrating. <laughs> but at the same time, it's amazing. God has done amazing things. Here's what I mean by that. Okay, In my past four years with FCA, Okay, I'm, I'm the area rep for the San Fernando Valley, in case you didn't know. So I go around to 10 different high schools in the San Fernando Valley. It used to be I have five. It used to be I have five kids at each of those. It used to be just a few of us just barely doing it. But God has tremendously impacted this ministry so that it has grown. 
to a large degree. And now we see people actually caring. We see people actually committing themselves to Jesus and following Him. We see miracles happen on our campuses. Burbank, are you ready for a miracle today? Yes. What would that look like? What would that look like for you? I don't want you to answer out loud. I want you to think about that. What would that look like? What is the miracle in your life that you are searching for, seeking after, longing for? See, the Lord hears our prayers. He hears our cries in the midst of my pain and my despair. When I thought my wife was going to leave me, Jesus heard me. He gave me hope. He gave me peace. When I had to think it was possible. Ladies and gentlemen, He can give you peace today. So that when the storm comes, when the storm hits you, you will have that peace. You will have that hope. And it's real. It's real. I can't, I can't even describe how real it is because I went through it. I know that it's real. There's this calming sense. I can't even, I can't describe it perfectly, but, but I've been through it. So I know, I know that I know it exists. I know that I know that the Spirit of the living God is alive in me. So He's allowing me to experience His peace. The Scriptures say that He will give us peace that surpasses understanding. We won't even get it. I think that's why I can't describe it. Because this peace that I have been given was not something that I earned. It's not something that I deserve. But it's something that God graciously gave to me, even in the midst of pain. Even in the midst of sorrow and suffering. Even when, when I, I was like, okay, I've got to put on the mask, but it's a struggle today. I gotta put on the mask because I don't want to see. I don't want people to see me when I'm when I'm, I'm at my most vulnerable. I don't want people to see me all, all downcast. I say that with confidence because I know I know that He's in control. It's not about me. It's not about my story. It's not about Wes or Mr. Thompson or Josh or any of the other leaders in here. It's about His Spirit moving in us, moving through us today, leading us. I pray today. I pray today that the Lord would lead me, that the Lord would guide me. I didn't know what I was going to say. Two seconds ago, I didn't know what I was going to say. I was praying. I was like, Lord, please show me. And as I came up here, He gave me peace. And it just came. It's peace. Peace. My peace I live, leave with you. My peace I give to you. Jesus says, I give you peace. That's what you need today. There may be turmoil in your life. There may be struggle in your life, but peace is available to you. Who wants that peace? Raise your hand. Who wants that peace? I want you to stand with me. If you want that peace in your life, if you don't, nobody's forcing you. See, what you need to do now is you need to surrender to Jesus and say, Lord Jesus, take my life and make me whole. I am broken and I need your peace. In fact, why don't you say that with me? Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus take my life, take take my life and make me, whole. make me whole. I need your peace. I need your peace. I pray this in Jesus' name. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now see, what do you think? I gave you that opportunity, and that was not me forcing anything on you. I really hope that nobody feels forced. I really hope that, that the peer pressure wasn't the reason that you stood up. Because that's not what we're going for, okay? If you meant that, the Lord hears you. The Lord knows the difference between what you mean and what you don't mean. 